So this is a quick walkthrough on how to uh, do some basic troubleshooting for the Netgear LV1120, which is our basic level uh, LTE gateway or modem. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that A, the uh, LTE, or the uh, Netgear LV1120 is plugged into power. And then you can either access it by connecting an Ethernet cable from the one Ethernet port found on the back of the modem to your computer, or um, if you are if you don't have a, a computer or a device that has a direct Ethernet plug into it, you can also uh, make sure that it is plugged into a wireless router, and then at that point you should be able to access it wirelessly as well. So once you have that done, when you have access, make sure that you open up a browser and go to 192.168.5.1. That is going to bring you to the basic sign-in screen right here. So it's going to ask you for a password. That password is found on the bottom of your modem. It'll be alphanumeric, uh, a little bit of a pain to see. It's in pretty small print, uh, but we do not change it from the defaults on that modem. So uh, that, is, that is the uh, password that you use to get on to it. Once you sign in, It'll take you to your, your home page here. So this will give you a little bit of information. The first thing you can look at is just whether or not it says internet connected. Um, now, if you if it's not connected at all, it'll in this spot, it'll see uh, mobile broadband disconnected. That is indicative that either you have a card that is not uh, attached to a plan or that the card is not installed correctly. It'll also give you some uh, basic signal quality right here. So it, this is the same uh, this mimics the information that's on the LED indicators on the modem itself, so one to five bars. Uh, generally, you want it to be over two bars. If it's one bar, that means it's really, really poor signal, and you're unlikely to get any good speed out of that. Um, however, um, we do want to make sure that you understand that just because you have five bars does not mean it necessarily mean that it's going to be fast. You are still limited by the bandwidth that's available on the tower that's serving, servicing you. Um, and we have some resources on our website to... Uh, to explain those those differences. Now the next thing that you have on here, you can go to uh, messaging. Now it will say on here, this, these are basic uh, messages that are sent to the uh, to the modem itself. Um, so in this case, it's saying data activation successful. Sometimes uh, you know the cards and the numbers that are associated with the SIM cards that are on here, they can accept text messages. Uh, sometimes you see uh, system messages, so it'll say you've used X amount of data on this account. Um, you can essentially disregard anything that comes in like that. Uh, and every once in a while you'll see some, you know, it's, it gets spammed by advertising and things like that. So in general, we just recommend that you ignore anything in your message. Next thing on here is your settings box. Uh, so on this tab, you have uh, device settings. You can do your admin login and change that. I do not recommend that you do that. Um, you can go to software and reset on here. Um, generally, we don't you don't really need to back up anything on the on the modem. It's all pretty basic. Uh, you can do a uh, check for new software. The firmware on these modems does not get updated very often, so it's not really necessary to do that a whole lot either. You can restart it from the GUI as well, uh, or you can just power cycle your modem by unplugging it for uh, 10 to 15 seconds and then plugging it back in. You can also conduct a factory reset on here by hitting reset. You can also conduct a factory reset from the hardware itself by holding down the reset button on the back of the modem uh, for about 10 to 15 seconds. Now, uh, you will also have the mobile tab here. Uh, in general, you're not going to have to do a whole lot here. Um, the one thing that you can look in here is APN. So we have, uh, you just want to make sure that this is um, populated with an APN of some sort. An APN is essentially just a key to attach, uh, to connect to the tower that's servicing you, be that AT&T or T-Mobile. Uh, AT&T's APN is broadband, T-Mobile is fast.tmobile.com. You just want to make sure that that is in there. It is possible that there will be a different APN associated for your account, uh, particularly if you have a static IP. Um, so if that is the case, then we will make sure that you know what that static IP APN is as well. If you need to add it, you can add it right here and uh, and put it in there. Uh, so you just name it, so you can say at t APN, and then you would type in what that APN would be. In this case, it would be broadband. You 
You can also edit it on here, so you can open up the existing AP, and if it's on there, let's say you were on a dynamic IP address and you upgraded to a static IP address, you can come in here and say edit, and you can edit out that, uh, that APN right there. This should be auto-populated. Um, this will come the default from your, uh, your SIM card. Uh, so it's very rare that you actually have to change any of this, like I said, unless you're dealing with a static IP. Shouldn't have to do anything with SIM security. The next and most important page is status details. On the status detail pa page and on that tab, uh, you have a few things that, that help you see what your service is. Uh, so RSRP, that is indicative of the raw signal that is coming into the modem. So right now it's sitting at NEG97. That's relatively high. Uh, generally, you won't start running into problems until you get over about negative 110. So the lower the number in this case, uh, or the higher the number rather, the better. Um, so at NEG97, really anything between NEG85 to NEG100, that's really, really good. Um, you know, 100 to 110, that's that so-so. Anytime you get over negative 110, uh, you start having some major issues. Uh, that's indicative of a very poor signal. And there are some other things that we could do, like external antennas and things of that nature. Next on the list is your quality. So this is the signal quality. Um, so you have signal strength, and then you have signal quality. That quality is indicative of how many obstructions there may be between you and the tower, what your line of sight looks like. Um, you'll see this number go up and down based on how foggy it is outside, um, sunspotting and things like that can affect it. Uh, the majority of the time, the only thing that's really going to make a make a difference on that though is obstructions, and usually it's obstructions found in your home. So you don't want to put that modem, you know, between, you want to place it near a window so it has as few obstructions as possible. You want to play it, place it as high up and as close to a window as you can so that it's a, as clean of line of sight to the tower as possible does not have to be perfect by any means, uh, but it will do better for you the less obstructions you have between you, your modem and the tower. The next on this list is your current radio band. So there are uh, four different radio bands that are used commonly, and there's uh, six that are, are used via LTA. So the most common bands are band two, band four, band five, and band 12. This modem is capable of selecting all of those. However, it just goes round robin and uh, is assigned a band by the tower itself. It has no ability to lock onto a band. What this means is you can experience some varying speeds. So it could be that you're getting, you know, 25 meg at one point. It changes band from band four to band two, and then you see that number drop down to 10 meg. Um, that is, and there you saw it just changed from band five to band two. It, ha it happens automatically. Uh, there's no real way to control it on this particular modem. Uh, what that means is different bands have different uh, performance. So uh, the power levels are not the same between them and the bandwidth that you can experience with them can change in, from, from piece to piece. And so it is important to know uh, whenever you're troubleshooting, if you're experiencing really good speed and then it drops, uh, go ahead and check out what radio band that is. So you can start trying to find a pattern between uh, what what your throughput is on different bands. And you may, you may be able to see, okay, I have great service on band 12. I have really poor service on band two. And at that point, if that's something that we can establish and see the pattern, it's possible that you can get a, a separate uh, modem type that is able to lock on specifically to that band that is serving you better than the other ones. Uh, other than that, there's not really a whole lot that's needed on here other than potentially uh, you have the option to use this as bridge mode versus router. The only time that's really going to make a difference for you is if you're trying to use security cameras, you need a static IP, and you need this modem put into bridge mode. Uh, however, the security provider that you're working with should be able to walk you through that, uh, and we'd be happy to work with them on a support level in case you need that. If there is anything on here that uh, you do not understand or you need additional support for, please feel free to contact us at support at allofip.com and we'll be happy to help you as um, thoroughly as we can.